Hello Music Freaks, that's Mathieu again. Um, again, I'm gonna talk about Bitweek 2. And um, I saw today a video from Alexei Komarov uh, showing how to make a synth from scratch with the modulators in Bitweek 2. Um, it's a great video. Uh, we'll put the link in the description. You can, you can see uh, how we done it. However, he's not talking a lot on it. I mean, he's not talking at all, so I have to follow his mouse. And uh, I thought maybe it would be nice to make the same process again and explain at the same time. So that would be good for people um, who are starting with Big Tweak 2 and want to understand about modulators. And that'd be also good for people who don't know anything about uh, synthesis and uh, and uh, yeah, that's a great way to build a synth right there. Um, yeah, so basically that's the patch I've been doing like in this in the last half an hour. And it sounds like this. Um, yeah. Show you a bit like this before we start getting into it. Um, anyway, so this has been pointed to me first uh, by Alex, a fellow Bitwig developer. So watch this. First, I will pick it up here, and it's called. DC offset, so you just type DC in there and then it's right here. Then you can use your arrow down and enter, so you don't even have to touch the mouse. So this is DC offset here, and what it does, and it creates a uh, current amplitude. I mean, I'm not a, scient a scientist, <laughs> I don't really know the, the, the physics exactly behind it. Uh, in terms of math and everything so uh, bear with me in order to understand what it's doing uh, just like Alexei is doing his, in his video I will uh, take the oscilloscope great oscilloscope by the way is almost like it has all the features of a of a scientific oscilloscope so what you do when you do this and you you create uh, direct current offset like uh, hence the name so plus minus I'm, I'm taking this with the mouse and up and down and that's what it is doing so since you can modulate everything with the modulators then you can modulate that thing I understand if I could move this fast enough when we even can hear some stuff it's not in the audio range yet because it's not fast enough so I will have to make it move fast enough and so I press here on this small row here and I press on the plus and I will pick this LFO there is three different LFOs in the modulators but I take the normal I mean the the, the one called LFO um, so how do I do to get this to move uh, to this rate first I will open the LFO like this we want to be able to hear the the sound. I mean, it has to be fast enough to be notes, basically. Not an L, not in LFO rate, not a low uh, frequency oscillation, but an audio rate oscillation. So it's better to go down there. What what's happening with my drop down menu? Oh, for some reason it's up there. Anyway. Yeah. It's a bug here. I will try to. Oh, it's really buggy right now. Don't know what's happening. Yes, now. So, it's in kilohertz now. So, it's gonna be fine. Uh, I will put this down. This is the amplitude. I don't want it to be too uh, loud right now. I'm a bit afraid that it's going to be really loud. Anyway, let's try. I press on this to assign uh, the, LF the LFO to the DC offset like this. And you start to hear something. 
can even see it here in the oscilloscope. I stop the mapping, go down here for the volume. This is going to be useful later for amplitude. And here we can change the pitch because the oscillator, I mean, yeah, the LFO that is not a low frequency oscillator anymore, but an oscillator is oscillating the DC offset, making current uh, getting in our speakers or headphones, by the way, in this case. And uh, yeah, and then we hear sound. But for now, it's continuous, like in a synth, in a normal synth. Uh, what, what I mean, normal synth. Let's put this down. If um, in in any analog synth, the oscillator is oscillating all the time. <clears throat> it's just that we have some other modules that make it react to whatever that is triggering the sound. Could be keys, uh, and uh, so so it makes this uh, the um, the amp go on and off so you will see this in a minute so for now we have our sound like this i don't even know what kind of pitch it is yet if we want then to have the volume going making like this and react to the notes from the keyboard i will first need an adsr which is an envelope like this and then I will map this envelope because if you if you every time I will press on the keyboard, we're gonna oh I'm on an audio track right now which is actually not exactly what I want. I want an instrument track. Instrument track here. I will copy everything. Such a dumbass. Um, everything on the instrument track. So. I actually have MIDI signal. Okay, so when I press a note on my keyboard here, you see it's triggering the envelope. So now I have to map to map this to the amplitude here, and then every time I press on my keyboard, it's opening this knob and lets the the the. The signal go through. Can I have it more percussive? Less release. Okay, now we have. So it's not matched to my keyboard yet. So I can press any key. It's always gonna uh, make the same sound. I mean the same pitch dictated by this knob. So it looks like this guy here is the one we want to match to the keyboard in order to be able to play it. So, it means we need another module here, our modulator, which is called key track. So you type key here and boom, it's here. So key track is gonna be mapped to the uh, oscillator frequency. Meaning, we we press on this one to map it, and we just go. I will I will try to play. Uh, okay, I will stop here. To say it again. I will try to play uh, scale, and I will try to match. Uh, while I'm mapping this, I will try to match the point where the scale I'm playing is actually sounding uh, i mean the pitch is our uh, uh, pitch right i uh, can try with an octave is the octave sounds good it's probably that it's gonna it's gonna work out so look i open this one this guy and i say i want it to relative then i can close it again then i press on this to map it to the lfo i mean the oscillator pitch Oh, it was mapped already, so stop and again. So I will play an octave. And until it sounds like an octave, I will keep increasing the value. It's really hard because it moves, it moves the pitch at the same time, so it 
good sound, uh, good ear training skills uh, to try this. Ah, it's not far, not far. That's an octave. Da -de -da -de. So now I can stop this and then. It has a bit trouble of tracking the fast the first note it's because of my envelope that is too too slow for tracking this i would need a retrig at some point i don't know how to do this yet uh but first well we're not here to to play chopin on the keyboard right so basically it's working we have a very very basic uh sin going on I don't know if when I press a C, if it's really a C right now. I could move this and transpose the whole keyboard while keeping uh, it's still matching. An, an octave is roughly an octave. So um, how can I match it to the real pitches? Uh, I would need a test tone like like uh, Alexei did. So far, I did everything the same as in the, in the Alexei video. It's gonna, I'm gonna do some other stuff at the end. Um, we need the test tone or anything that can give you a pitch basically, but we have the test tone here. It's giving us a B5. Okay. So this, when I press a B, it should be a B. And I'm matching this knob, you know. Oh, it's really hard. Let's try something else. Good enough. So now it's match. That's F minor. Ah, if I do, if I go too fast, it's. I would need a retrig somewhere. Um, okay, so we have the DC offset and the LFO uh, in uh, audio rate, ADSR for the amplitude, the key track, the scale is matched, the pitch, uh, uh, absolute pitch is matched. So what can we do more? Well, uh, we could have, we could make, uh, oh, first, in, of course, in the in the oscillator, can we have this we can so change the the waveform in various ways but if we had this one modulated we would start going in the fm world in frequency uh, frequency modulation so i could go with an another lfo but also in audio rate so it's fast enough to be a pitch and i will match this to the waveform here uh, and it's gonna move this uh, either way it's okay and we start to have an this kind of sound course you can change all the parameter of this LFO that is not an LFO anymore and now it's another oscillator basically uh, and you see what it's doing to this it's not reacting to the uh, to the envelope uh, so we could actually match uh, we could map this uh, we could modulate this parameter I mean this oscillator with the same envelope so let's go ahead and do it. I press on this and then whoop. Go octave down to see what's happening. The 
this is the delay uh, uh, you can have the this oscillator not triggered exactly at the beginning can I have interesting sounds I will uh, try to have a longer sound here uh, taking the envelope up there so we can hear what's happening So this way you understand what's happening under the hood in the in in the in all those uh, FM soft uh, soft synths. I mean, you can really go crazy with this. This is just the beginning right now. Um, we could have a knob here to control this. So let's try, uh, well, actually, sorry. Uh, yeah, exactly, to control this one. So I press on this macro, just one macro, oh, boom. Then I want this knob to control that knob. Oh, it's not doing much, maybe because the envelope here is doing too much of it. So I will cancel this. Uh, from the ADSR, so you can blend the FM like this. Anyway, you see in the oscillator what it's doing. Um, okay, so the basic elements are there already. Uh, we have one oscillator. We have um, the amp amplitude going um, on and off. With uh, with an envelope, it's key mapped. And uh, we need a filter now. Uh, so I just add it. That's the beauty of the digital world. Filter. Can take any of them, but I'll take this one because it has no envelope inside. The, the ladder has one already, but it's just for the sake of doing it ourselves. Um, mostly in the synth, uh, the filter has an own uh, envelope generator. So I'll do the same. It's like this. So I will match the envelope to the map not match i say match all the time um, i will map the envelope to the frequency of the filter cut off frequency and then we have wow wow it's then opening like this you always have the amount of uh, envelope on the right side of it it's here or it can be negative but then for this I would have to change the form of the envelope for it to work so um, it would be nice to have a knob to control this without uh, having to open the, the window every time so uh, I take just a macro okay um, I do this here for the oscillator first the, I will do it for the filter afterward uh, so I open this and I say okay I want my macro to control uh, this guy. Uh, it's best to kind of match the positions before, or for what I understood. I, so, no, that's wrong. I cannot go down with this. So, I will clear. Uh, what about we go down all the way and down all the way here and uh, map it like this what's happening now yes so now this is zero this is now the amount of I couldn't name it um, amp envelope amount and that will do the same with the filter envelope 
uh, envelope amount macro uh, oh VCF as voltage control filter envelope amount and then map this to this oh same thing uh, down down and then all the way up so now you have it I have more resonance so we... oh I should not touch this because I have it here oh I messed up this was down yeah so this is zero in the middle okay uh, so now we have the control to the filter we might want an LFO in the filter well let's do it let's take the classic LFO in this case oh no let's not because the thing is with the classic LFO is it doesn't go or durate or does it no the maximum is 50 Hertz exactly so it's an LFO like like it says so I will take the the other one the the LFO that's not classic because it can go audio rate and you will see what's what's happening oh, I could have both actually um, so I will map the LFO to the cut off frequency I can have a macro okay, you start to see the big picture I guess um, the macro to this one. Oh, I should first match their position I mean that's the way I do it there's probably something I didn't get with the position of the macro so now you have your classic LFO on the filter so I put more FM here or was it let's make it dirty oh what is free here So there you have it, you wobble. So not bad for um, an instrument track with no actual instrument inside, I would say. Um, of course, you can uh, you can layer diff uh, several of them. I mean, as soon as you go on the first uh, main device and you press uh, Command G on Mac, probably Control uh, Control G on on PC, you can duplicate the chain. Uh, go ahead and change some of the settings. Just like this. And I don't know, change the change the envelope too. I will put one on the left, one on the right. Oh, the one on the let's solo it. This one is not doing much in this setting. Oh, I did put it down. So it could go endless. Uh, this is the basic thing. Oscillator, uh, amp, filter, but then you can go mad. I'll remove the, the oscilloscope here. 
uh, you can go mad and go with the effects then I will just go for the bitwig ones like audio effects oh no let's go for a ring modulator <laughs> So we could use this as an audio source for something else. I mean, it could be in another track, and then you put an audio receiver, and and whatnot. Like, uh, okay, let's do it. I put the ring mod. Oh, this is uh ah, it's taking the mic actually. How is okay? We could actually modulate. We could oh, okay turn this off. We could modulate the synth with my voice. Or oh, let's do it just for just for the fun of it. Uh, another layer audio receiver, which is a really nice thing. I would say I want the audio from audio four, which is the track with my with the microphone in but oh it has to be okay like this we don't want to hear it so I put the volume down but it's getting the signal right no it's not is it pre fader yeah it's working so um Now the audio receiver has to be somewhere in the patch, I guess. Oh, is it? Yeah. Hmm. I can do this. Because you have a, a device in the modulators. Let's forget about this one for now. Um, here. It's called envelope follower. So whatever signal comes through, it's gonna f use it as a modulation source. But what about if I do, oh, oh, so it's following this, okay? So let's try. Okay, I will, um, I will change the envelope settings so the sound is continuous and uh, cut the filter I mean oh, uh, stop the the LFO madness and uh, yeah open the filter so we hear what's happening so my voice is coming through we can see it here then uh, it's picked up by that guy and then this has to modulate something uh, we could try to modulate this one this oscillator that's doing the the FM thing oh my voice can be heard no Oh, it is. I hear it somehow. Anyway, let's try it. Boom. This is going to modulate this guy. And it is pretty awesome. Ah. Ah. So you can go crazy. You just saw it. I just went kind of crazy. Um, <laughs> it's just awesome. Uh, modular people, people out there are gonna love it, uh, especially because you can interface. Uh, you have this uh, hardware CV instrument hardware CV out, uh, hardware clock out, and you know, all this hardware th stuff is for your hardware instruments, uh, like hardware CV instrument. I I didn't get it to, uh, to work because 
I'm, I need a cable. I should have bought the cable uh, before. Anyway, uh, this is gonna match with your uh, hardware um, uh, analog synth with CV in and out. Uh, oh wait, with CV in and gate in, and uh, the the plug is actually uh, matching the pitch, so it's gonna listen to the synth, uh, send the CV and listen to the synth and find the right frequency. So if you have some Moog um modules or if you have some roland modules or if you have so whatever i don't i'm not a modular freak i don't even know the the standards but i know some of them are one volt uh, per octave or five volt per octave or three volt per octave uh, they have different uh different standards but this guy here is gonna find it and make it for make it work for you so you can play it on the keyboard and send me the notes or whatever this is awesome anyway that was it. Just making a synth from scratch with uh, between two modulators. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I give the credit again for Alexei uh, Komarov for his uh, uh, for making the video again. Um, credit to Alex from Bitwig who showed me the, I mean who programmed the DC offset and showed me the trick first. And uh, yeah. Uh, have fun doing crazy stuff uh, in between too. Ciao.